Hi Sequels friends! Today we are doing another unboxing and it is another Thread Up unboxing. This is one of my favorite Thread Up boxes to get. It is the 24 piece scarf rescue box. And I love this box because it hardly costs anything in an investment and I'm always pleasantly surprised by the amount of return I get on that low, low investment. So if you'd like to learn more about this Thread Up Scarf box or maybe you've already gotten boxes in the past and you just want to peek in and see what I got in my box, well if that's the case, just keep on watching. friends welcome back to my channel it is so great to have you here again now if you're new my name is Heather and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark eBay and Etsy and I use this YouTube channel to document my journey as I said in the intro today we are going to do an unboxing and it is a thread up scarf unboxing this has got to be probably the fourth or fifth scarf box that I have purchased this box is fabulous fabulous box for new resellers or people who are new to sourcing from ThreadUp as it has the lowest investment. So if you want to put minimal amount of money in, then this is the box for you. This is the ThreadUp Mixed Scarf Box and you end up getting in here, let me see my little cheat sheet over here, you end up getting in here 24 scarves and it costs just $16 or for me since it cost shipping since it had to include shipping and handling ended up costing me $21.99. So for just $22 you can give this box a try which again to me is great great for first timers. Now I popped it open just to make sure that it was scarves because I've ordered several thread up boxes lately and I just wanted to know which one it was so that I can record this video, but I have not seen any of these scarves. This is gonna be a true, true unboxing. Since it is scarves, in my past experience, most scarves on average, I have sold for anywhere between nine and $14. Now, typically I get some nicer things in here, which may go for 19 to 24, or I may get some in here that goes directly to a thrift store and is donated, or I may get some uh, in here that I'll go ahead and throw up on clearance for like four or five dollars in my eBay store just to recoup some of my cost. But overall, on average, I seem to make about nine to fourteen dollars. That is gross on each of these. So given that there's 24, if all of these are saleable, and again, I gotta look at my cheat sheet here. If all of these are saleable, that means I have the potential to make $225 to $350, which to me is phenomenal on a $22 investment. I always do updates on any of my boxes once I sell through 50% to let you know if I've gotten anywhere close to those gross projections, because what the hell's the point of making a video that tells you I think I can do this, and then I don't do it, and I never tell you and update you. This is for all of us to learn and to help grow our own businesses with factual information that has worked for me so I think it's very imperative to give you guys updates based on the updates I've had on this box these boxes I've always been pleasantly surprised that I do make money on them which to me is awesome because it's a quick way to get 25 items into your store especially if you're like me and always looking to try to increase the number of units you have in your store so I know shut the hell up Heather and show us what came in the box so let's freaking do it this is, oh my goodness, if I could only read it. Phoenician design. And it is, <laughs> it's so small, I'm not even sure you're gonna be able to read it. Um, but it is, uh, oh my goodness. 40% silk, 60% polyester. It does have a little bit of a silk hand, so I would have said I would have thought that this was silk and I would not have been completely accurate. It's just a square scarf, like a neck scarf or a handkerchief style. And it has a cool geometric square pattern all over it. This is girly as all get out. <laughs> it's not on the top here, but it's catching my eye. So I feel like I really need to pull it out and show it to you. Look at this. <laughs> oh 
little roses and then dangly rose fringe oh my goodness and it is on both sides little tangled up there but I'm sure I can get that all undone and it has seed bead detail as well as dangling from seed beads <laughs> oh it's so girly let's see if there's a tag on it I don't see a tag, but given how unique this is, I will most likely do it in the 14 to 24 range. It is 100% polyester, it has a tag on it. It doesn't have any branding, but it looks like something you might pick up as a tourist. Black border, black and white with all over um, graphic print. And it says things such as Paris, Eiffel Tower. Notre Dame, Arc de Triomphe. All sorts of things on it. That one is fun. I am noticing quite a few snags on it. That's very, very common in these scarves. Um, just disclose it and take a picture or two to show them in the listing that it does have snags. It has not de deterred people from shopping, so that's good. This is a pretty basic tan infinity scarf. Look at this. This is Barbie, crystal Barbie spectacular nylon and metallic made in japan i don't see that often look at this it looks like cellophane that is really pretty i think i might use tag mermaid in this it is a little bit of an oversized um square this would be a great head scarf hair scarf Here's an animal print, just a very long rectangle scarf. There is no identifier on it. Really pretty. Here's another very silky filling scarf. I'm trying to see if there's a label on it because it looks like there's words. Is that Bill Blass? Bill Blass. Nice square scarf. Again, it's soft like that other one, so I would likely put in it that it's likely silk or a silk blend. Pretty neutral palette. Um, I have no idea about Bill Blass to know if it gets any extra money because of that. There is some discoloration right here. This is a very pretty pink color, and this is more of a traditional scarf, like a winter wear scarf. Oh, wait. I think it's actually, oh, I don't think I've had one of these before. I don't know if it's a hood. I'm trying to hold it so that you guys can see the angle. It's completely closed in the back, but there is a neck opening here. Um, it does have the really fun fringe detail, and you can see it's a really pretty open knit and a really pretty pink color. Um, this is really interesting to me. I haven't done anything like this or gotten anything like this before. I definitely think it would be a, up from the other ones. There is a small spot on the inside here, which again, we'll try to get off. This is an adorable, I love this. Just an all over heart print, but it's not in pink. It's in navy and white, which I love. I love the heart motif, but not always, you know, super girly or reads like Valentine's Day. Here's another basic infinity scarf. Yep. Just China made, no brand. Again, these usually go nine to 14 range for me. This one is a brand. It is David and Young Collection. It says softer than cashmere question mark, but it is acrylic. So it has the hay and it does have a very cashmere hand when you feel it. I've never seen this brand before. It's very interesting. Um, 
but the color that is so much fun <laughs> do we have here oh my goodness this is that same Fenny Shun design which again just seems like a um, Chinese brand <laughs> see if I can get that tag in there for you it's so tiny and it is again 40 um, silk 60 polyester I don't really know what these shapes are. <laughs> At first I thought it was little jelly beans, but I don't know that there is a true, I don't know that they are something if they're just for show. I'm not really sure how I feel about that one, especially in bright red. The, I, I've seen this before, but I don't know where. The Froz. As I always say in every video that I do an unboxing, if I pronounced it wrong, feel free to phonetically educate me in the comment section below as I will take that to heart and use it correctly in the future. I've seen this brand before, but I don't know where. It's just a made in China brand, so I can't imagine, well, who knows nowadays everything's made in China. It doesn't really dictate whether the brand's high quality or not anymore. Um, but the pattern, and the styling and this tapestry sort of weave. It's usually some of the first ones that sell for me out of a box and I do these usually start at 24. To you see that on here, it says Paris. Paris, Paris, Paris. And it has, um, it is a tapestry style um, and it has a um, Eiffel Tower on it. Here's one of these basic sheer um, again, a long rectangle scarf. It has the um, unseamed fringe hem woven. Really pretty um, paisley, kind of like a paisley medallion. This one does look like it has a label on it. It is Charming Charlie. This is a crazy Muppet scarf. <laughs> Don't, I, I, I think it's an infinity too because it has the, I don't see the Muppet scarf in the infinity as much. Just all over, crazy textured. This one screams Valentine's Day to me. Um, fringe detail, you do have the metallic threads running through. Black and red with all over hearts. Here's another one that is the sheer style and it does say target on it so um again sometimes i wonder if it's better to know or not to know <laughs> with scarves it almost feels like it's better not to know the brand um because i think they just buy it because they like it again it has all of the natural fraying details with tiny metallic silver little pokey dots really large this one would make a great beach cover-up I bet here's a pretty basic knit infinity scarf it does have a tag in it it's old navy doesn't get much more basic than that it isn't a pretty dusty rose color now we're back again to these gauzy woven see-through sheer ones with the um, raggedy fringed hem. I really like this. Again, blue-green, which to me always does really well. It is geometric, but it also has a very beachy feel, and it looks almost like watercolor the way it's painted. This would definitely be a great beach cover-up. Oh, it's so pretty. I wish I could show it to you all together. It's really pretty. Look at that watercolor detail. Very, very nice. That one I definitely think I would price up. So see, it's almost like you're pricing up based on the look of it and not so much based on brand or anything. And again, that's worked for me. Here's another fun long rectangle. Look at it all over printed fish in a stripe pattern blue light blue and a really pretty pink color 
and it has the true tassel fringe. Let's see if we can find a label on this one. No label. That one's cute too. Again, I think that one would make a great beach cover-up. Sarong, that is another awesome one to add in. And don't forget the belly dancers because some of them you can add in hip scarf because they are looking for those, um, not only for costumes, but also just to wear for practice. This is interesting. Hmm. This is a sheer over knit ruffle. It's in purple. Adorable lettuce hem. This is where the seam's at and it is open so it's not an infinity scarf. So I imagine that you just wear it long like this and then wrap it. That's not too shabby. Actually, it's kind of cute. I like it better on than I do just looking at it. Um, the the um, ruffles give it a lot of texture. Okay, okay. I see you, Lulu. Now, I've never done any Lululemon accessories to know how that would do. Let's see if I can get it. I mean, I assume it's a scarf. See the snap detail running through the middle? And it's open on both sides like an infinity. And this little, where the logo is, is a loop. I love these blanket scarves. They always move well for me too, like the tapestry ones, and they usually go in the 19 to 24 dollar range. This one feels definitely like an acrylic. It doesn't have, I mean, it's not itchy or anything, but it doesn't have a super nice hand to it. It is a really traditional print. Again, you have the fringe detail and it has some striping. And here is the last one. Oh, I love it so much. It's a very traditional plaid. I was hoping it would have a nicer hand to it. I'm just looking for a tag. <laughs> yeah, no wonder it doesn't. It's Morona. But you do get the style with it and it would definitely keep you warm. It's just, it must be acrylic because it doesn't feel, of course, I, I say, I look to say that and then I already throw the tag up to the side. It is acrylic. But it is a really pretty um, plaid, very traditional like a tartan plaid. Okay, I am back. I've done all my comps and I am ready to give you the true, true totals. So just as a recap, I received 25 items in this box, even though you're only supposed to receive 24. So woohoo, yay for me, I got one extra. This box cost $16, but it cost me $21.99 and that includes the shipping cost. Overall, because I got 25 scarves, that works out to about 88 cents a scarf, which is phenomenal. I totaled everything up and I do not have a price for one scarf and I'll go into that in a little bit, but not including that one scarf, I hope to make anywhere between $245 and $388 which is just about where I quoted from the beginning when I said 225 to 380. So it's pretty much a guarantee to make around that amount. Gross, again, gross. This doesn't include cost of goods, platform fees, shipping discounts and the like, but you stand to reason to make anywhere between 250 and almost $400 with this box. Now, one of the items I put straight to clearance and that was the Old Navy item. I had considered doing that with the Target items, but they look like they're selling in the nine to 14 range when I looked at Poshmark. I only looked at Poshmark, I didn't look at eBay this time, just so I can get a quick gauge. Now, let's see if I could tell you this without Mad Max acting like a Mad Max like he is right now. Overall, four of these 25 items I priced at the $24 starting price point. That was that really unique pink seed bead rose scarf, the beautiful water, I call it a watercolor square big scarf, 
the tapestry scarf, which I've said over and over again, I've sold ones like that and I've sold them for $24. And then also the Lululemon scarf. Now, the one that I didn't list and I didn't put anything on was this Bill Blast scarf, which I said when I opened the package, I don't really know if Bill Blast name means anything. Well, this is throwing me for a loop. So I've only found a few of these so far online. I have not done Google Lens or anything, but Google Lens to me is so hit or miss and just gives you very similar to Google Image does, just gives you similar looking patterns, not always the exact same thing. Um, I did search for a uh, brown Bill Blast monogram scarf. I've seen a couple of these come up in navy. I've only seen one or two in brown, so it seems fairly rare, which makes me wonder if it's vintage. One person has it listed as 1970s vintage. I don't know if that's accurate without doing a bit more research. And two sites have the navy version listed for sale at $225, um, and I'm assuming that's new. So the people who are selling it used and vintage are selling it for about 15, which would be the normal range that I would price a branded scarf in that 14 to 19 range. But I'm going to do a bit more research to figure out if this is something special, if it is vintage. Um, now, I don't think I'm going to get anywhere next to the 200 price point, but I would like to educate the customer and let them know what it is and maybe get, you know, a higher price point for that. So I just will continue to say it until I get burned on one of these, but so far so good. It has just been a success and I absolutely love them. One of my favorite ever purchased thread up boxes and I cannot recommend it enough. If you've purchased a thread up scarf box, please let me know in the comment section below if you love them or if you don't. Let me know if you've managed to get them sold and if you haven't managed to get them sold, were you using all those tags? How were you photographing them? Were you doing all the things that I'm doing? Because maybe it's just some people, some shops move them and some shops don't. I'm not really sure, but I would love to know your opinion in the comment section below. As I always say with thread up boxes, I know so many newbies who've never purchased thread up come into these videos and they look through all the comments. So please, if you have found that your experience is different, please do leave it in the comment section below because I know it will be super helpful to those new people. So I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, useful, insightful in any sort of way, please go ahead and take the two seconds to just go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And also, if you haven't done it yet, please do consider subscribing to my channel. It costs you nothing and it means the world to me. In fact, it also helps me to work out towards getting my channel monetized. I am amazed to see that I have about hit my halfway goal with watch hours, but I haven't hit it with subscribers yet. And that seems the opposite of what most YouTubers attempting to monetize experience. Usually they hit the subscribers, but not the watch hours. So to me, that lets me know that I think you enjoy watching these videos, but I don't think all of you guys are subscribing. So please do. And if you do subscribe, make sure to ring that bell so that you are notified every Tuesday and Friday when I upload a new video. And for all of those of you who have already done that, thank you, thank you so, so much. It really, really means the world to me. And I so, so appreciate you helping me to get to my monetization goal. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday with a How To Tuesday video. Have a fantastic weekend guys. Bye bye!